Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where resources equal power. Today we're hunting for those vital resources. We're going to skip from asteroid to asteroid until we can finally find a little bit of cobalt and maybe some silver. Cobalt is essential for building any successful empire. It's primarily used for, say, your hydrogen engines, hydrogen thrusters, your refinery, your assembler, and many more other components. This is our first asteroid, and on this ship, we are utilizing a large ore detector and our antenna to kind of scour around this asteroid to see if there's anything here. Hmm, right off the bat we have some ice. That may be a good sign, but then again, a lot of the asteroids that I've encountered, even though it says it has ice, it usually doesn't have much else except for maybe some iron or nickel. If you're cruising along the asteroid, as long as you're within a few meters, it should detect everything that's within the asteroid. That is, as long as you're using a large ship or detector and not a small one. A small one you may actually have to cruise on the surface. It looks like the ice is right below us and as we move around this asteroid you'll see the distance becoming closer. Essentially what I do is try to get to the closest point we can from the surface before actually touching down and trying to take on whatever resource it is. Seems like a valley here, but it doesn't really get us any closer to the ice. If you're pressed for time, you may want to only check out asteroids that are already showing the resource on the surface. I don't really see a closer spot. Maybe we should move a little bit closer with our ship itself. Perhaps there is a point on the other side that will get us almost there. If you did find a resource, but you decide, uh, I don't need it right now, or you're only going to take a small amount just to get started, I suggest marking the location. This is pretty simple. If you hit the K button or enter the terminal, just click on the GPS tab on the right hand side. From there, I select new from current location. You can also copy it to the clipboard if you want to use, say, a notepad document in order to keep track of them, instead of all the coordinates showing up all the time or having to turn them on and off just to see them. This I'm just putting a simple ice deposit. You can mark it as always visible. That means anywhere on the map you'll see it. Otherwise, I just put it at show on HUD, which means anything else that's showing on your HUD will still be there. But if you turn off your HUD by hitting the H key multiple times, that ice deposit should still appear. All right, let's venture to the next asteroid and see what we can find. When you're traveling through space, I move far enough from the asteroid where if we project somewhere, we're not going to run into it. And then I point my crosshairs to the general location I want to be in. Then I throttle towards that position until I get to a suitable speed, usually between 60 to 100 ms. And then I hit the Z button, which turns off the reverse thrust. So your dampeners aren't on, and you don't have to use as much energy to get to the next location. This is very helpful, especially if you're running low on ice or any other energy resource, such as electricity. Oh, look at there, we found some iron. I don't typically mine iron because whenever you mine rock, you end up with a lot of iron anyways. But if you see iron, you might possibly find something else or multiple things of iron. That 
as usual, I'm going to kind of scour or circle this asteroid to see if there's anything else that pops up on our screen. And again, I'm going to mark this as a basic iron deposit. I also mark asteroids, even if they don't have anything on them, I'll just mark it as no resources found. That way, I know that I've already gone to that specific asteroid. Otherwise, when you're in space and you start moving around back and forth, you may get lost and not realize you've already been to an asteroid or not. Let's see, if we venture over here, it almost looks like... Oh, yep. There is some silicone here. Silicone, again, I do not mine directly. I just simply use the rocks. This includes nickel as well. If I find nickel, I just pass it up. But, as mentioned before, if you find one element or one resource within an asteroid, go ahead and give a quick fly through to see if you find anything else. Sometimes when these lesser resources pop up, it means there's other ones, such as the silver we just found. Although we need silver, I think to save time and energy, I'm just going to see how close we can get to the silver without having to drill. If we have to drill quite a ways to get to it, I usually pass it up unless it's, say, uranium or gold or platinum. Silver is more abundant, so typically you can find the next asteroid has a bit of silver in it as well, but closer to the surface. It seems like we're getting closer, but I don't see any caverns or tunnels or anything like that. So we may not be able to get completely to it without having to drill a hole after all. If you don't know, if you can't figure out how accurately the distance is from you, or it's kind of a big asteroid with a lot of crevices, you may want to simply get out and start searching on foot. Well, jetpack that is. Sometimes it makes it a little bit faster, especially if your ship is already picking up the resource. Then you can just follow that direction, see if there's any kind of passage to it. Oh, another dead end. This is more of a ravine than an actual tunnel. The same goes for surrounding small chunks. I have found plenty of times on these small chunks that are around the asteroid that there will be hidden platinum, gold, or any other resource that might be valuable and found on the main part, but is not buried. Well, so far nothing. I think we'll just head to the next asteroid after marking this one. Since there's two resources here, I'm going to mark it silicone and silver. Even though I don't typically mine the silicone, you never know when you're going to use it again. It is also very helpful if you follow the same direction. So what I typically do is I try to aim for one of the planetary bodies in a general sweeping movement when I'm checking asteroids. I'll either point back towards the Earth-like planet, Mars, the Moon, or anything else that's relatively close at the time. That way, I can kind of cover the basis for all the different asteroids along the way.
Oh, see? We just found some silver that may be on the surface with inside of this tunnel. Just got to get a little closer. And there it is. So if you wanted to, you may be able to fit the ship inside of here and then mine it directly instead of having to drill it the whole time. The opening might just be wide enough for this even with the solar panels. But at first, we're going to have to do a little bit of modification. So first, we have to figure out what the conveyor is going to require. And it looks like we need to either do a medium cargo container or a small cargo container. There's nothing in this small cargo container at this point, so I'm going to take it down below the functional level, and then we're going to weld it back up, and it'll automatically unlock that block. See, there you go. No resources wasted. So if we come back to the progression screen and find the conveyor junction, now we should be able to use this and take out that 90 degree conveyor tube. Of course, the good thing about this is that you'll primarily use all the materials from that 90 degree conveyor tube to build this conveyor junction. I'm using the conveyor junction instead of say, a straight line because the conveyor junction needs to connect our survival kit with the oxygen tanks. If we don't do that, then we can't actually dump our ore through this conveyor junction from the drill into the basic refinery. There we go, now we got a simple drill. And I just put it on here like this before we added a piston just so I can widen the hole a smidge. We just don't want to have to hit anything. Maybe add some lights here. These are just corner lights and I'll probably put just a couple of them on here for now to light up our path. Let's see if we can squeeze through here a bit. I'm not setting this drill in my G control yet because we're just going to take it back off after we've cleared this hole so we can put a hinge, a piston, and the drill back on. I think that may be wide enough for our solar panels. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Yep, looks like we have enough steel to make the piston and the hinge. I use a hinge, that way I can fold this piston and drill out of the way in a sleek movement to be able to fit within the tunnel again. You can either use a hinge to make it go vertical, up or down, or parallel with your ship, either to the front or to the back. And that's the basic setup right here. We just need to set the controls and make sure we don't rip off our right solar panel when we move it.
Whenever I'm using a setup, if it's for a drill or for a specific item, I try to name everything that'll match in a line to keep it more organized. So if I'm looking for the hinge control for the drill, I call it the drill hinge. That way I don't have to go searching through my list to find the hinge. Same thing with the piston. Everybody knows when we're on multiple projects, we will have multiple listings of pistons and hinges. On the hinge, I'm setting the upper limit to 45, and that should be accurate enough. Oh, maybe not. It should be accurate enough not to take out our solar panel, but still put it in an angle where we fit through. Right, it is quite a bit dark in here. See, we can maneuver slightly. Quite a tight squeeze. Oh, look at there. There's also cobalt down there. We'll have to check out that. I think I'll add these lights back on to see if we can illuminate this area. This is a little bit faster than building a permanent platform and saves you on PCU. Rather than building an entire platform and then drilling everything out and then taking apart your platform and moving to the next location. Unless you want to stay at this location. There, I think four of these corner lights should do it. Just crank the radius all the way up. And now I am going to set the drill and the piston and the hinge all on my G controls. seems to be working still not that bright it's quite hard to see this silver even though it's a reflective material I need a, something a little bit brighter maybe a strobe light would work it's quite big but at least it'll light up this area There, that looks better. It's not that wide, but at least it shows where the drill is. If we added three more, one to each side, I think we'd light up the whole area, but for now I'm just going to try to get away with this one. We don't need an overabundance of silver starting out, so we'll just stick with this for now. Almost forgot to add the piston extension here. Now you can kind of see where the piston is extending to reach the ore. It's not doing too bad. 
we should be able to get enough of this silver, but we won't be able to break it down because silver requires a full refiner to break down, unlike our basic refiner we currently have. We will be able to build the full refiner to break it down as soon as we collect that cobalt, though. It is a bit tricky moving through some of these caverns. I suggest maneuvering pretty slow so you don't bump into anything. Let's see. Yep. We got a decent amount of silver. But as mentioned, it won't break down in this basic refinery. I think that's good for now. And we'll just go ahead and try to get some of that cobalt. We'll take this light off, just so it doesn't stick out and hit anything. And maybe we'll put it down here instead. That way we can see as we try to move forward. Mm, didn't really do that much. Okay, I guess we'll try to back out of here because going through this might get awfully tight and ruin part of our ship. It's like we're grinding on something or hitting something. Unfortunately, a lot of times you can't see when you're stuck in a cavern because you can't change the view. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're almost 90 degrees compared to where we entered this thing. Definitely going to have to tilt it back downwards before we can move any farther. There, I think that should about do it. We're pretty close. Once I tilted it down, it actually gave us the availability to see the entire ship again. So all I need to do is back out and kind of match where we had drilled out for the solar panels. And then I think I'll venture around to see if we can get to that cobalt a little bit easier. From inside, it was saying 150 meters, which is quite far to have to dig. Mm, I don't really see another opening or anything like that. And it's disappeared from our HUD. Quite possibly the only way to get to it is to find the other end of that cavern and simply go through to see how close we can really get from the surface. I do not think it's on the surface on this one, so we may do a little bit of digging, but we definitely need that cobalt so we can break down other resources after we build the refinery. There's the silver again. And it looks like there is the cobalt. Yeah, we'll just park here and try to get it by hand. It is a little bit closer. It's got to be around here somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised if it led us directly back into the same opening again.
and that might be pretty close or as close as we're gonna get so let's just go ahead and try to dig it out again if you right click you won't produce any stone to get in your way so I'm just right clicking on my mouse until I get to the cobalt and then after that I'm going to left click so we can actually mine it don't forget to stop mining with the right click or you may waste quite a bit of the cobalt before you can grab any Although it does say 15 meters, 20 meters, that's from the center of the resource. So a lot of times you might be four or five meters up to 10 meters away from it and actually run into it like this. We're still about seven meters away but we've already reached it so that means this thing is about 14 meters in diameter which is a pretty decent size for a cobalt deposit cobalt does produce fairly decent amounts when you mine it so i'm not going to worry about grabbing it all i'm just going to grab enough so we can get started with this I think that's about as much as I can hold. Yep, and back to the ship. At the same time, you will inevitably pick up stone mixed with your resource that you're trying to get. So you can drop that from your screen if you want to. And then continue to grab more of the resource. Now, where did I park? Oh, there it is. At least we have that antenna installed. Depositing this directly in this small cargo container automatically feeds it to the basic refiner. And we're producing cobalt. Well, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you share your tips and tricks in the comments section. I appreciate it.